Hey guys, check it out. This has got to be one of the most interesting builds out here at the Easter Jeep Safari. It's a gladiator, right? Well, yes, but not one like you've ever seen before. This is a three-row converted gladiator, and I've got the gentleman here who did the work. He's going to take us through what he did. Craig, thank you for uh, having us uh, uh, do a walk around today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad that we were able to get together and look at it. Yeah, so why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell us who you work for. Yeah, so my name is Craig Cheney. I work with a company called Bolden. We do adventure gear products, uh, specifically around audio and, and getting out and doing things uh, with your vehicles. So tell me about why you decided to build this crazy machine, because this, yeah. this is not something I think most people have seen before. No, and it, it stems from, um, we have a family. You know, uh, surprisingly, I've got a bunch of kids, and we've had a lot of Wranglers and things like that in the past, and we like to get out on the weekends and go do um, pretty fun activities, right? And we found that once we had had more than three kids, Wranglers didn't quite do it. And so um, we looked at a lot of their vehicles. Obviously the new Grand Wagoneer wasn't announced yet when we started this project, but we needed something that had seven seats. And so um, after driving the Wrangler, I loved it. And when the Gladiator started uh, coming out, we actually were working on the Gladiator audio system back a long time ago with a different company. And um, fell in love with the Gladiator. Wow. You know, everything about it. This is a great vehicle. And so I decided I wanted the Gladiator a uh, little bit of nostalgic reason because I worked on it, but also because it's a great vehicle, great platform, um, and decided that we would just make it a longer wheelbase Wrangler, essentially. So tell me about um, the, f the first thing you did when you decided you wanted to make this into a more than a five-seater Gladiator. What was what was the first thing that you uh, had to really, what was the first challenge you had to tackle? So the first challenge was what everyone brings up is flex. You know, your pickup trucks, they twist, they bend, they, they move, right? And so what we did is we actually um, took the truck and fully loaded it in the back. So we used wood, uh, went to Home Depot, loaded the thing up fully with wood. Uh, and then I brought it back and we did a full flex test, lifted the front right front tire off the ground um, and measured how much that back end moved up and down. It was about an eighth of an inch. Okay. It wasn't much and I was willing to, to bet that a little bit of foam, a little bit of, of uh, tolerancing in the roof would allow us to get that flex and accomplish that. And, wow. And it actually works out really well. Um, and then in addition, uh, we can't see it right now, we'll look at it in a minute, is we added a, uh, a Jeep, a 2019 Sahara JL uh, roll cage from in inside the regular uh, Jeep, the four-door. And we tied that into the existing uh, Gladiator frame, and it just changed the dynamic of the entire vehicle. So is this still a removable top? I mean, is this something you can still pull off and uh, enjoy the sun with? Yeah, absolutely. So you can take the whole thing off and run it in convertible mode. It just looks like a dune buggy almost. You know, it looks amazing. Um, and then during everyday life, you run it like this, and it works out really well. Sweet. So talk to me about how you accomplished this. I mean, this is obviously a lot longer than a standard Wrangler top. So what is this made out of? Yeah, so what this is, we started with a, um, I worked with Mopar and ordered a, a Jeep Wrangler four-door top. Um, then, you know, measured out the distance. We cut the top in half and stretched it out so that it would then fit the, the, the bed of the truck and try to keep that seam lined up right there. Um, from then, then we used the Freedom Tops in front and kind of the inspirational muse of this was the Defender 110. Oh, so, wow. you know, you look back at the old Defenders and that they've got this kind of raised roof line and things like that. Um, one of the only criticism I have against the Gladiators oftentimes looks a little bit long and flat. Yeah. Um, and so the, the goal here was, you know, how can we make it look a little bit more aggressive and give more benefits inside the vehicle? Yeah, it's really cool. So I, I noticed you still have kind of a cut line here between the, the top uh, and this front portion, it, is this where the flex happens? Talk to me through that. Yeah, so essentially this is just a, a flex zone. So if the truck wants to move or twist, it does move there. But actually reality, I've not seen it move once. Interesting. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. So moving along back here, um, you probably had to do what, custom glass? Is that right? Yeah, we had custom glass made. We had got a pre-tinted glass. So there's not a plastic film in this ring. It's actually pre-tinted. Um, and then what we did is we just laser cut uh, a new piece and and had it installed. So it's it straightforward for the most part. Um, it is tempered glass, so it's safety glass. If you, if you hit it with a hammer, it shatters in little pieces, cool. and you know, keep it safe. Now moving along back here, um, oh wow, you've kept the uh, the rear window. It looks like. Yeah. No. Again, the the intent of this entire build was, can it look OEM? Okay. You know, I don't want it to be standing out and being all strange and purple parts all over it. Right. I want it to feel like somebody might have bought this. Gotcha. And that, that was the intent. So I noticed back here, you have named this Wagoneer. Was this before Jeep? Uh, came out with the uh it was originally the thought was let's let's call this the wagon here because that was the the traditional family mover and then with with this motion here it's like well 
they're calling theirs the Grand Wagoneer. I almost wanted to call this the Wagoneer R, off-road package or something. Make it a little different, so we just stuck with Wagoneer for now. And nice. It's been pretty good. So can you open it up? I'd love to see um, yeah, absolutely. what the, the remaining bed looks like and how you did that. Yeah, so actually, you know, one of the big things I've really loved about having a truck back rather than a regular Wrangler is I've got a workspace here. When I open up and we're prepping things or doing things, I actually have space here to work on. Whereas in the, in the Wrangler, you've got to add the little the fold-down table or something like that if you're doing camping. And it's been really good. And you can see, there's a ton of space back here. You know, you've got um, oh, probably two and a half feet to the back seat when it's up. And yeah, it's it's really usable space. Now, is this a JL back seat? Talk to me. Uh, yep, that is out of a JL. It came out of a 2019 JL, um, as did a lot of these other parts inside the truck here. So you'll notice that there's a roll cage all the way back here. And this is... Uh, we we actually got a hold of a JL that had been wrecked, a 2019 Sahara. Um, it was actually in Michigan, oh, okay. fun, fun enough. Um, and we had them uh, cut the entire top of the JL all the way down to the quarter panels off and sent it to us. And the crate was about the size of a Volkswagen. It was huge, um, but really a lot of fun. you know. And, and the, again, the goal was OEM, OEM, OEM. So uh, we wanted the factory audio system all to be tied in. We wanted to have... The, the plastic panels all tied in so everything looks like it might have actually come in the vehicle like this so in terms of the install is this a is this a bolt-in thing is this a weld-in how did that work yeah it's kind of a combination so we wanted to not compromise the original cage so if you look up in front you can see the cage has a little bit of um, some bracketry and some bolts that are going into it to keep it um, locked in place then in the back here we tied it into the to the side of the of the bed and connected it that way and it's amazing it's actually a lot stiffer than you'd think it would be because in the corners of the of the bed, the steel is actually folded and doubled up, and there's some extra trusses in there, so it creates a lot of strength without having to tie it all the way down into the frame. Oh, and you still have the, the seat belts too with the tensioners. Yeah. Tensioners. Um, this we have actually the plastic covers for these two, the OEM plastic covers, um, but we didn't get those installed in time this week. So. Gotcha. Well, yeah. why don't we do this? Why don't you hop in on that side, and I'll uh, I'll shoot through this door, and then let's see what it looks like from the uh, back seat, or I guess the second row now. That's pretty wild to say on a Gladiator. The second row of seats. Yeah, the middle row. So, as you can see back in the middle row, it's uh, still very, very you know standard looking. Not a lot of going. Well, strange things happening. It's what you'd expect in the back row of a, of a Gladiator. Yeah, that's um, cool. So you can kind of see where the uh, you basically kept the original roll bar, like you mentioned, and then mm -hmm. just tied in a second one. Is that correct? That's right. So if you look up in here, you see that we have this this bracket that actually runs across the top. It's eighth inch steel, um, and it's it's bent and it comes around down the sides as well. So this piece here is actually much stronger than the original roll cage. Um, and, you know, if something were to crack or hit or, or you know, let's say we rolled over, um, it's more likely that the OEM cage would bend than this bracket. Now, Craig, did you keep the uh, bulkhead behind the, the, the rear seats here of the truck? We did. So originally the plan was to cut them out and to use that space to, to access, but you can see that the actual tethers for the seats are right here. And so gaining that extra four inches of crawl over space didn't seem that important to me when I had to think about where am I going to cut and recut the, the bed and then remount the seats. Gotcha. And so I decided, you know what, the kids are small, they can just climb over. Now, can I see you try to climb over? Is that Ooh. possible? I'd love to see what it's like back there. We can try. Let me come on that side. The yeah. seat's a little bit bigger. For sure. I'll come over here. Yeah. I'm a little bit away. And you mentioned this is removable too, right? It comes out pretty yeah, easy. Yeah, it comes out really easy. Um, this, this is actually a, a bolt-in bracket from uh, TerraFlex designed for the JK. We modified it a little bit more so we can fit the JL seats. Nice. So they, they don't sell it for the JL, but a little bit of modification, we were able to make it work. But cool. All yeah. right, let's see it. I can't wait to uh, see what it's like sitting in the bed of a Gladiator. I really like this top. I think this is super cool how you did like the stadium seating. Yeah. It's really a unique look. So we got to put the seat up first, and then from there, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Just drop a leg over and, you know, you're in. And now I have giant legs, but, um, you know, a smaller child would be okay. What, um, what do your kids think of it? They love it. They absolutely love it. love it. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I'm six foot four. I'm a little tall back here. But, um, you know, designed for kids that are two and a half feet tall, it's perfect. Now, is this something that you're looking at putting into production? Is this a one-off? Tell me about what the plan with this is. Yeah, this is going to be a one-off. This is more of a can-we-do-it kind of vehicle. Um, really kind of fun to, to try things and see what, you know, what we can do. 
Nice. Yeah. Well, Craig, thank you for the walk around. This has been super cool. And let us know what you think in the comments below. I mean, this is definitely one of the more unique rigs out here. Uh, and the fact that it's, you know, basically a much more usable Gladiator, that wasn't too bad. If you no. see me try to get in and out of a two-door Wrangler, it's about that bad. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. I'm six foot four. I'm not a skinny guy. I can get in and out there pretty quick. So. Sweet. Well, thank you, sir. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Thank you, Tommy.